Okay, so now we've got the fiber optics uh, all in, and so we're sitting in here quite loose at the moment. Now, obviously, um, this is trial and error on my part as well, and what I found is if you um, try and bunch them up so you've got a coil like one of these pre-done ones already, when you try and feed them in, they're somewhat of a nuisance to get them all into, you know, all the holes and everything. So it's easier to sort of place them in and then insert them afterwards. So what we've actually got is all the the line. So it's easier to feed them in from the front. So you can just sort of come along and say, right, okay. <clears throat> Make sure they're all through. Hanging right the way through so you can see out and then obviously feed the ones in how you want just like this okay and then what you can do is just push them very carefully back into their holes because obviously they've all got to go flush because we've got a piece of photo etch to go on the front here so obviously some of them are going to be a little bit more tricky to slide in than others Okay, so we get them all in there flush, and then what we ought to do is just pull them back a tiny little bit. Now, to set these fibre optics in place around the back here, we can just use normal super glue and kicker. It won't affect them because the actual outer coating of the fibre optics is pretty strong stuff. But if you are worried about it, you can use a drop of uh, PVA glue. Now, this one here is sliding through. So, what we're going to do is just make sure all of these are back pushed. All nicely back and flush so we'll take the part here pop this on the front to make sure we're all in there okay then we can come around the back if we just pop this on the front just for a moment get your film part okay then we can hold this forward okay then we can just come in the back here with a bit of super glue okay and then just in with some kicker okay and then we'll just let those all do their bits dry off in there <coughs> So that's that in. Now obviously we're all a little bit wet at the moment and that's all dry, but then that will enable us to bunch them. We can now cut them all to the correct lengths, okay? And then we can then insert them in. With our system here. Now we've got the LED is placed in the in the end here and more details about this will sort of come up later on as we said but basically what we can have is the kit will be like this you have your wires coming off then obviously as we said we just go off to a, a battery then you can insert your fiber optics into the end here glue it in place so you can either use PVA glue or super glue and then you'll be away so what I'm going to do is really I should wait Being hanging. now cutting fiber optics it's got to be a nice clean cut so I'm using my better scissors and you should they should snap off nice and clean now if you get an area where you've got like that one's a little bit of a tip on it just shave it off okay then we just have a quick test here for the moment we'll try and get these into here I'll just poke some of them in for the moment these is not all of them in there okay but then what we should get Is lights on and you should see them coming through now it's a little bit bright at the moment as you can see and let's say we've only got a few of them going through in there okay so we need to tidy them up a little bit to get them to go through a little bit better okay but that gives you the rough idea of how we're lining this up and how we're doing it okay so what we need to do is obviously bunch these up cut these all to the correct length so they're all the same length okay so we're going to trim these ends off just a little bit and then what we'll do we'll tidy up this fascia just a touch so it's got them all showing through nicely and then we can line all this one up and we'll be all good to go then so we 
just do it like that. And there we go, that's them all in there like that. So if we just retry that again, just to make sure we're all in there and happy. So there we go, that's all those in. As I say, we need to tone it down. So one way of doing that is that we can actually pop in a little bit of a uh, little bit of Tamiya smoke or something like that on the ends of these, just to tone them down just a little bit because they are just a fraction too bright, okay? And it will just tone them down. But that gives you the idea of actually what we're going to have showing through. So we're just going to clean up these ends because we've got a tiny bit too much going on. Okay, so what we've got now, we've actually got it together. So if we just move this in, I'm going to grab some wiring here. And there we go, that's our little simple lights you see on off, on off. The thing with them is they're extremely bright, so you might need to adjust them down, but it gives that right effect. And I think if you're looking at this, certainly at night or a cross angle, it really does work extremely well. You can basically work out all the dials and the instruments on there through there. But obviously, um, the way that they're printed and everything else, it would be better on a slightly sort of bigger type of dial and things, because these are quite small. But it does work, you know, you can probably... So on camera it looks a little bit more glary than it really is, but it gives you an idea of what we're up to, just like that. So actually, when we see the completed rig, you can see we've got them going in from the back, straight in from the front, and that gives it, and then obviously this will all be hidden away, so you're not going to see any of this wiring work at all. And because that's all going to sit <coughs> very nicely, if we've got all this room down here at the front, by the time we move this cable or water, bend it around, it's going to loop around, under itself um, that uh, we should be absolutely okay uh, and easy to fit easy to go so we've got that one all done and installed now okay now as I said we've got to worry about where the wiring is going to go so we need to pull it back the other thing we've got we've got another set of LEDs because what we're going to have is the actual um, going off to the wingtip uh, formation lights and this is something we'll cover so we've got a separate LED that again is going to fit down in the front here and then obviously what we'll do, we'll run these cables which will go off out to the actual the wingtips, obviously for the navigation lights of being the red and the green. So that's quite something straightforward which we'll do in a moment. But there we go, this is our first rig lighting done. Put in all just like that. A little bit of fiddling around, um, to be honest, of the way it actually all goes in and actually dealing with fibre optics because if you overbend them, um, they crack. One way you can get around it, if you heat them up um, with a hairdryer, you can get them to bend. They actually bend quite nicely, but unfortunately the way they actually are, you actually get hold of them. If you try and bend them, you're sort of okay on a loose one, but as soon as you go too far, you'll get like a pinch mark inside. And as soon as you get a pinch mark, the light will go and stop and won't come out at the end. So if you are bending them around and everything, just take your time with them and just bend them quite slowly. But that's the one for there, all done and sorted. So what we can do, we can put that to one side now. Let's pop that out of the way and then we can get on with the rest of it. So what we need to do now is really sort of button up this fuselage half uh, and sort out the wiring at the front here and everything else. So obviously we've got the cockpit we were talking about which is all done. We just take out the control column and that's going to fit in. So what we need to do now is have a look at the way that the actual the wheel placement is going to fit in and everything else. Now lucky for us when this actually all buttons up and goes on the inside we've got these big gaping gaps and that's where all the wiring's going to go so the wiring's going to go down there and obviously we're going to bring it down the wheel as we said and it's going to look like a bright line so we can't see any wiring coming down and then obviously the other ones will run off towards the light so it's nice and easy on this particular kit. Now we spoke about before obviously removing the actual raised areas just move these out of the way. The other thing we're going to obviously we're going to put in is the actual where is it? Is the wheel wells. Now these resin wheel wells, whilst they're absolutely lovely and detailed and everything else, there is one small problem. When you insert them in, so you come along and they fit beautifully in there. The main problem is, is when you come along with the actual top of the wing, so if we pop, this is the other side to be honest, but when you come along and pop them on top, it is nowhere 
near going to fit into this. So what we have to do is sand it off. So the first thing we need to do is remove this panel. So this one here has just got all this built up, which is for the kit part wheel well. Okay, and it's not bad detail, but what we're going to do, we just hack it all off just like this, and then we just sand it off. So, you know, some coarse sanding sticks and sand them off until you're left with this. And you might be able to just about make up, you've got the original ribbing marks in there, but we sanded it down a little bit as well. Okay, and then when you come along, <clears throat> what we've had to do is sand down the overall height of the wheel well. So, obviously, with this one, you might be able to see how much we've taking it down. Now this is one of those ones, I'm not going to sit here and measure them out. I'll give you some rough measurements, like on the rear corner we are down to, just trying to get a pinch on it, we are five, six, seven, eight millimetres uh, in thickness and eight millimetres on the other side, okay, and then on the front we are down to around about 12 millimetres at the highest, and at the nose, we are down to 8 millimetres again. So 8 millimetres really gives you things. So the easiest way is to take it off the height of this edge here. Now, when you're doing that, just come along, keep your sanding stick, and just try and keep it all wrong. And all I was doing is literally going along saying, right, we need 8 mil at the back, okay, and we need 8 mil at the front and 12, and just balancing it off. So then when we do test fitting, of when we come along with these and we place these on, we're looking to make it fit all nice and snug so we've got no gaps uh, moving around. And if you get a little gap, obviously sand it a little bit off and move down. But when you've got it on like that, <clears throat> hopefully, and then just sit this one in, and then you can come along and you'll be able to, it will fit pretty easy down into here. And we've got no gaps at the front. And it's the same one that it's all sitted in properly. We've got no gaps at the back. Now we've got little opening holes. We've got to put some little bars going across, but you can add a little bit more wiring in there. If you look at some reference photos of the real thing, there is a little bit of detail down here at the bottom, but you can put in a few little cables and everything else. And obviously what we're going to do is have the lighting uh, cable, the power cable is going to come in that way as well. Um, so you might want to pop a little hole in the side. So obviously the power can run in there then to the leg and then out. But that's quite a, a tricky one, very time consuming. I must admit, it took me about an hour just working on the one to get the right height. But I say, if you look at 8mm uh, at this pinch mark back here, 8mm on the nose and around about 12 in the front, you're roughly in the neighbourhood. And then you can just sand it around to get it in there. But once we've got those installed as well, that's really the bulk of the work, the heavy sort of, you know, changings of everything we need to make on it. So what we're going to do now, have a quick clear about, I'll just do that second wheel well. So we can get those bits done and that's all the nasties done and then we can get on with the construction. Okay, so you can see we've got the wheel wells installed. Okay, now the thing is to remember on this, it's one of those things you sand down and down and down to it. And I've actually gone through on a couple of little areas you might be able to see on the top here. Just here. So we've done but a little bit of uh, super glue over the top just to weld up the holes. Okay, and quite a coarse file because it's super glue. We just sand them down, take the raised edges off. <clears throat> Remember, super glue is a lot harder than um, the actual resin around it, so just be careful how you sand it and don't end up going through everywhere else, or you end up doing it twice. Okay, so that's that on. And then what you can do to obviously complete your testing and make sure everything else, what should happen is obviously these front edges and everything should just marry up very easily. There shouldn't be any force or pushing down, otherwise, what's going to happen is this area here at the front. You're actually going to take this out of shape, and then when you come to put the other bits on, it's not going to fit, and we're going to have steps where it goes to the wings and absolutely everything else. So that's those bits done and in. Um, and as I say, it's one of those areas where, you know, it's nice to have the resin, obviously you've got the detail of the lining and the hoses, but you could get away with the kit parts in those areas. The other bits we've been working on, which is quite a nice touch here, we've actually got a workable tail wheel, which is quite different. So if I just and do this a sec. Actually what we have here is a system where the the tail wheel itself if we just hook these on. These all go together. Now just take your time and make sure that the actual parts will still move. If you just pop these in the, the holes what you should see is 
get that one in. What happens is, I have to keep my thumb on this part here to hold it in, but actually the tail wheel goes up, okay, and inboard just like that, and then it can move. Obviously, we can just slide it down, but all the parts are actually moving. You might see the activators working there, so everything. So you could have the tail hook up or the tail hook deployed, but as I say, it all moves, which is quite a, a nice touch. And we've actually got the shock absorber actually works on the tail as well, and all those little areas. So that one's done quite complicated to get together and take your time as it does. The same as we've got this little bit of framework, it's going to go to the rear, which is just going to pop in this bulkhead here and clips down and this is where the the tail hook fits up into it so we've done those bits like that so we can get those glued in and then painted up and everything else we've installed the the cockpit with the side wall and put it on and as you can see we sanded this in now the bottom you do need to sand this off a little bit more which we will do in a moment but to give us an idea of how it's going to go it's going to fit in here <clears throat> just like so okay so we're in there all looking the business very nice now we've had to sand quite a bit around this top corner to get this in because when we look at the battery over when we've got the, the wiring is all done here on the back and the panel we've got the face in when when it comes in obviously we haven't got a lot of room for the cabling as it comes down the back but it's going to fit in here just like so and it's in there Okay, so that's all going to sort of fit together. So you've got two options. You can either pop it all the cockpit together or you could install this rear bulkhead and then obviously we can come along and slip this one up. So what I'm going to do for this particular purpose, I'm going to install and glue this part on now. So if we just move you a little bit out, so what we're going to do, obviously it's all going to be super glues for doing these. So what we're going to do, just pop that in. And it just should all roughly hang together. Then what you can do, <clears throat> we're just going to tack a corner just for the second. Okay, a little bit of kicker. Get that working. Just straight away, just to hold that corner in place. Okay, now we've got to install just another panel, but just for the moment, just so you can see what we're up to, we can slip this one in as well. So this one sits in there, so we have the entire cockpit done just like that. Okay, now the control columns and the little tiny details, you might notice I haven't put things like the throttle levers on there or anything else like that yet. I'm going to do those afterwards because they are going to be very fiddly, but what's going to happen then, this little guy is going to fit and it's going to butt up against this seam down here okay and the back's going to click in and the cockpit should click up and between them all we have the cockpit installed now we've got a small little gap going on just down the back here which we're going to have to take care of but it goes in but that gives you an idea of how the wiring is going to stay in there and how the cockpit will look once we're all in Okay, so we've got that slight side panel, but we've had to bend these down, and then because we've got the gear, <clears throat> it's all going to fit in here, just like that. We've got plenty of room for where this wiring is all going to come out. It's just going to come down here, and then we're going to feed it in through the, the lines, but pretty much lots of room. So, at the same time of putting that one in, we've got this cable loom here as well, okay? And then obviously we're going to fit this one in here, exactly the same will just fit in, and then we'll run these... LEDs off one for the left one for the right and then we can wire them all together and it will give us our um, navigation lights as well as the actual um, cockpit lights as well but there we go that shows it all in so as I said you are going to have to stand a little bit off the bottom here to get it in but if you wanted to for the moment you could tack this roughly in place I say about tacking the reason I say about tacking is if you have to get it out you can just ping it out and because you just got a small amount of super glue it should just ping off and away you go but that gives us our a rough idea of what's going on here in the cockpit and hopefully now we've got all the lights and the wiring installed we've got these wheel wells in that's all the tricky bit it's got the gun bay still to go but now we can really start moving this one on so we'll just get this one fixed into place so there we go that takes care of that now if you have got any giant gaps running down here it's something you can do a little bit later 
with a touch of filler okay around here but from the other side that's all now glued in and is in there totally hard so what we'll do we'll just pop this over here and we'll just <coughs> grab the battery okay so if we just light him up you can probably see the lights coming on there we go so if we do it like that and there we go that's our let's say with the leds it's those things when you see them different angles you can see them in different lights but there we go i think that works really really well as i say first time really played with these in depth and tried to do this type of thing and as i say it's a bit of a learning curve all round but you see for something like that we get quite a nice effect running in there with all of those so i'm happy with that so what we can do is we can unplug the old power supply now from those and then we can concentrate on sort of bringing this all together so what we'll do is just get the battery out of the way so now on this tail section we've obviously we can install this and then we will do is respray up this area as a whole or you could put it in as a separate we'll weather and wash this i'm putting this actually in and certainly these back ones as well now this one goes in okay so it's sort of over the lip at the back we bring it in you probably see so this lip here at the back it um overhangs slightly down into the actual main part of the fuselage okay so that's the bit we're talking about so that way the tail hook will go up in between it all right so we're going to use tamiya thin for that we'll get all these parts installed and in position and then what we can do we can then go around and bring the two halves together get the wiring all sorted out all nicely in place it's coming out just like so a bit of drop at the top as well okay so we get that in get the tail hook installed okay and then we, we can do we can get the side panel fitted onto the cockpit up here and then obviously we can get the sides on together and we can start then getting the main fuselage in and all the other bits and we can start working on the flaps and really getting into the pull motions of getting everything together if we bring it all the way in you can see it at the top there that's how it should be so what we do we're going to spot this with a little bit of glue just to hold Bit too much there so what we can do we use a cotton bud just to soak some of that up because we don't want it gluing the everything around there quick squirt of kicker okay that gets that rudder in there quick wiggle to make sure it's in the right position Okay, so we're happy with our, that is again, so we'll try and fit this all together once more. Okay, so we just bring in these halves, let's bring you out a bit. We're going to do exactly the same as we did the first time. So make sure that tail hook is down out of the way. Bit of a pinch, get that tail in. Now we just sort out this tail wheel to make sure it's all lined up on the inside in the grooves. That all looks okay to me. It's the same thing again, we'll just pop a peg just down here on the back. rubber band around the back here Take a hook up out the way one more pass over <clears throat> okay so we're fine how the tail is so what we're going to do we're going to glue up the back all this area around here okay and then we can work our way forward and around so we're just gonna make sure this rudder is all okay seems to be a little bit stiff a little bit of the super glue has seeped through so we just give it a wiggle get the rudder going there we go a 
there we go. So if we can pull it through its motions, it's just it's got stuck with the super glues used forward a bit. So there we go, that's all okay. So we're just going to come along with our glue now and just glue up the entire thing. Okay, so that was all sealed up. Now we've got some bit of gaps running around here. Um, you probably see on the close that. Let's bring this in. Uh, so what we've done from the underside is got quite a bit of super glue floating underneath there. Okay, and then obviously it's going to seep through at the top. But what I'm going to do is there's no real gap up here at all. We'll be able to sand this down very nicely. Now back here we've got a bit of a seam. Um, I've over sanded it a little bit on the joint, bringing them together. So what I've done, a bit of super glue, and then obviously we've sanded that totally smooth. So what we're going to do now is let that sit and stand out. But one thing I'll just show you before we go is we've put the bottom on here, and it rocks completely. Uh, and the trouble with this is that resin tub that we've got underneath here, you know, is really forcing the difference here. So what we're going to have to do is sand down this part underneath. So we've got some real coarse sanding sticks. And it's going to have to take quite a bit of sanding, so you might want to do this outside. I'm not going to do all this here. I'm going to take it outside and sand it down. Yeah, because it's a nice blowy day. That way I won't have to mask up and get the extractor on. But obviously sand that down uh, so it goes in. Now we're luckily enough, it's quite a thick area of resin just down here when we do it, so don't worry too much about going through the floor because it looks like it's very, very thick. Just be a little bit careful of it, but it has got to go quite a long way to get this bottom one to fit in. Um, as I say, as soon as that chunk is taken out, obviously this will fit in a lot better. So that's really it for the, the stage. I know you probably want to see it with the lights on in there, so let me just quickly hook this up to show you. So if you just pop this one around here. Okay. And if we just turn off one of the lights over here, it will just show a lot better. But with the lights on you can probably see now depending on the the angles this one's at it depends on how you see the instruments but you can probably see them all lit up just like that you can say quite nicely done now what i've done is just to make sure it all works this uh instrument panel down down in here turn that light back on uh this instrument this little light back here it's quite difficult to see in here. I've actually just tacked it with a tiny bit of PVA glue and it does move slightly. So what you can do is if the instruments are slightly out of alignment with the lights behind them, you can just jog it along a little bit and fix it. But there we go, that's uh, where we're to. Uh, coming on quite nicely, as I said, that's the, the hard work all out the way now. I say this tail hook keeps getting in the way, but at least it's all retractable and sits in there just like so, there it is, shows you with the wheel up, but it's all in there just like that. By the time we weather it up and go through it, it'll look great. So there we go, until next time, happy modeling.